Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn and today we're going to show a field visit to Kala compost plant of Haya Waters. Harfan Alamri was the administrator that hosted us during this visit and he is now explaining us the procedure before we go and visit the field. The plant was designed for over 40,000 tons per year and now it's operating around 54,000 tons per year. This is a schematic of the plant, uh, including reception patio, composting patio, maturing patio and packaging area, also the administrative offices. The trucks bringing the green waste, including woody materials, are weighed on their way in to quantify the amount of organic matter that is incoming into the composting plant. This is what the material received looks like. This material is used to balance the carbon to nitrogen ratio from the sludge material. Industrial sized shredders are used to shred the materials as they come in before they are used to balance the carbon to nitrogen ratio from the sludge material received. To assemble the windrows, the sludge material is brought to the composting patio and assembled in lines of approximately 3 meters of base and 1.5 meters of height. This sludge material or biosolids from water treatment plants. We grow compost turners like the one you see here on this image are used to mix the sludge material from water treatment plants with the woody material brought from public areas and shredded into fine pieces upon reception. Here you can see the windrow turner in action turning the pile of compost for aeration, moisture reduction and temperature reduction. The aeration of this material is very important during the composting procedure in order to accelerate the process of organic matter decomposition and increase the amount of material that the composting plant can process. The moisture of the sludge material is around 80% upon reception and this material does not give any leachates because of a pre-centrifugation step that Haya Waters performs before delivering the sludge to the composting plant. Upon mixture, this material will lose humidity up to reaching around 30% during the maturing stage. The initial composition of the windrow is one part of sludge material and one part of green waste material. This material is subjected initially for a first turn for mixing. Heat starts to build up in the material, reaching up to 70 centigrade Celsius. After 55 centigrade Celsius, we assume that the compost starts the active composting stage. During this stage, the compost must stay over this temperature for at least 15 days and during these 15 days at least five turns mixing events must be performed. Once the temperature starts decreasing in this compost material then the thermophilic phase is over and this compost is ready to be transported to the maturing stage where it's going to rest for at least one month before being sent to packaging. The color compost plant receives sludge material from all Oman except from Salala, but receives only the browns, the plant residues from Muscat municipality area. So the browns, the amount of browns in this system is the Achilles heels of this plant. Because the amount of sludge tends only for increasing and the browns are harder to obtain and tend to maintain a constant level of supply or even decrease in time. That being said, the amount of sludge received in 2020 
was 30% lower than the amount of sludge received in 2019. But that is alright since the plant is already operating in a very high capacity. So to evaluate if the compost is over the thermophilic phase, the monitoring of the temperature is taking place daily on the full line of each compost. When it reaches the time where this compost must be brought to the maturing stage for the curing stage, this compost is already fairly dry with around 30% moisture. Here you can see one compost line which is nearly ready to be brought to the curing area. For the first years of operation of this plant, inoculants were used to accelerate the composting process. But then, after suspending the use of inoculant for a period, they evaluated that it was unnecessary. The transport of this material for the curing area is done by tractors and to evaluate the curing process, the EC, the pH and the moisture are constantly monitored. If the analysis of the material indicates that it's not mature enough, then it's sent back for recomposting in the composting area. The continuous drying of this material during the compost and maturing stages is desirable for the final product. Nevertheless, when it rains, it's rarely that rains, but when it rains, this can become a big problem and whole batches of compost need to be recomposted. You can see in this image the tractors transporting the finished the compost from the thermophilic phase up until the maturing patio. This, as you see here, is the maturing patio where each wind row is marked with a code and monitored for maturity during the following month. Once the compost is deemed mature based on pH, EC, moisture and temperature, then this compost is sent for the central labs for further analysis of NPK content, microbial analysis for pathogens, heavy metals and other analysis. You can see here the lab facilities present at the composting plants with ovens for drying the soil, thermometers and EC and pH meters for simple analysis of the compost maturity. ICP, pathogens and NPK, carbon to nitrogen are done on the central labs from Haya. You can see uh, EC and pH meter. This is the thermometer used to monitor the temperature in the wind rows. Just a schematic of the wind row. This is a schematic of the process of composting with the thermophilic phase the full process from reception of material up to packaging. Here is showing the sieving of the material after ready for packaging, the packaging plant, and the transport of the material for sales. Overall, a very beautiful activity that helps Muscat and Oman to be a more green country recycling organic waste and repurposing this organic waste for agriculture throughout the country, which is much, much needed. Without this composting plant, over 50,000 tons per year of organic matter useful for agriculture will be lost in landfills.